take nothing for granted in the spiritual realm. God is working all the time. How many of you know that? All the time. You be aware of it. I've been seeing this old song and I can't get it together. I must have sung it when I was a child in school. It was one of those praise songs. Praise him for the sun, moon, and stars. That's all I can hear of the song. And and something about the mountains and the lands, but he's created everything. You understand? Yeah. He's created it for his enjoyment and your beauty to see what he's done. Just think about it. He just didn't decide, well, I'm going to put some mountains here. No, he graced the land with beauty yeah. and with art and with precision. Hallelujah. Just look at your bodies. He said, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. That means the doctors haven't discovered it all yet. Hallelujah. Medical science has not discovered it all. Glory to God. How he put us together. I want you to think about that. I've been thinking about it recently. How he put this body together. How it works. What we have to, to eat. And what we have to comfort our bodies with. With good rest. Good ideas. Good thoughts. He is Lord, and there's none like him. None like him. Hallelujah. No one can compare to him. No one. Come on, there's no one like him. No one. No one like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants us to enlarge ourselves in him. Enlarge yourself. Stretch forth the cords of your life. Say, Lord, I just need more room for what you want to do. You won't see those anxieties around you, but you'll see the blessings and the goodness of the Lord. I had a vision of the Lord so close to people, but because he didn't have their attention, there was things he couldn't impart unto them or give to him, give to them. He was right there to do what they needed, but they didn't give him attention. And you say, well, why wouldn't he do that? Because he's God. That's why he doesn't, many times he, he doesn't do what he wants to do is because we don't honor him for who he is. Right. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Honor him for what he, who he is. I got up this morning and I heard that song as soon as I awaken. It's an old song used to be in the old hymnals. So I sang what I know and I did the da-da-da's in between, the, you know, the dots. <laughs> Praising God. Hallelujah. There's movement in your praise. There's activity in your praise. There's victory in your praise. And God is looking for people, you know, you, you, you don't want to look stoic and like, like a blank wall. You come into the church and you want to see faith on people's countenance, in their dance, in their clap, in their song. When you sing, it brings joy. It brings activity. Hallelujah. And it's not that I don't feel like it. Well, suppose God didn't feel like he wanted to do anything today. You know what happened? The accidents and tragedies everywhere. If God decided he didn't want to do anything today. So we praise him for who he is. Not for what I can get out of him, but for who he is. He is great. And the Bible tells us when Jehoshaphat was in battle, they sent the singers out, the, the Levitical priest. And the Word of God tells us in 2 Chronicles, I think it's in chapter 20, that they praised the Lord with a loud <laughs> praise. Amen. That means it was louder than what they do at the football games. <laughs> the people that are... are, are Screaming the most are those that want their team to win. Well, God's already won. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you got a praise in your mouth. you got a joy and a dance in your feet and your hands. And thank Him for who He is and how glorious He is. Hallelujah. That'll wake you up in the morning. Glory to God. You're going to have some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. I'm telling you, you're going to get old one day and you're going to find out what it's like. You get older, you're going to need that that interest off of that praise that you gave a long time ago. Lord, how many you know what I'm talking about? You hate to put money in the bank and for interest and 
They said, well, it's two and a half percent for six months. Don't even bother me with that. Come on. God's got all the interest you want. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, you know, we can go to church and we're going to let somebody get to Christmas place and sing the songs and we're going to get entertained for a few moments and we might take communion and we go home. But what happened? What did God say? What did we experience? Come on. I'm telling you, he's everywhere and he wants you to experience it. Can I hear a shout out? Amen. 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 You see all these bags? It took me days to get it together because I can't move very fast. You don't know what it took just to get them in the car because I wanted you to have something. Glory to God. And these bags are, are there's videos, there's CDs, there's books. As I know of, these books have never been read. These CDs have never been played. Because when I got them, I took the wrappers off of some of them. Some of the wrappers on them. And then I didn't know how to use my VCR. <laughs> so I put them back for another day, and that day has never come. So I never listened to them. They're wonderful CDs, books. And then we have this little book called Sapphires. Oh, yes. And I've been saving them since 21. Some of them I've hardly touched. I have, they're not worn. But they're like jewels. It's yes. by Jonathan Kahn. Yeah. I'm a, one of his warriors. Hallelujah. And I've been giving to him for a few years. So I get a CD and a book every month. Amen. And I've been saving them because, listen, you don't want to throw away treasures. <laughs> don't throw, none of you throw your Bible away, do you, when you get through it? You, you don't know what to do with it because you know what's inside of it. And you want to honor it. So I got all these Bibles on my on my shelves, old Bibles. I'm looking for somebody that's going to lay a cornerstone, lay them in the ground. But anyway, most of them have one of these books and a CD. Most of them have three or four things. And I've got some, I had a few bottles of anointing oil, five or six. So I just put them in different bags. They're, they're, they haven't been used. Some of you might want to anoint your cat or your dog or your cow. Hallelujah, your neighbor next door, most of all, that's your worst enemy. Glory to God. I'm just telling you. So, I had all these things. I got a wonderful book on. I haven't read them. Uh, they're here. I hope I didn't put any papers in them. I'm just glancing through them sometimes. You know, I see something and I throw a paper or a receipt or something in there. So, you save it for it and give it back to me. Anyway, we're going to give everybody a bag. Now, listen. If uh, you get something that somebody else might want. You might want to trade. How many people have a VCR? Oh my goodness, I'm in trouble if you don't. Okay. Uh, a CD player. You can play a CD? DVD. Okay. DVD. A DVD player? Yeah. Yeah, there's DVDs, CDs, videos. A few videos, not many. I've got one that for Perry Stone on a... On a Hebrew wedding. It's never been open. The seals are on most of these things. Okay. Uh, if somebody, but you got to have a player to play it. So you might want to trade with somebody. Uh, we're in pretty little bags. Look at this. Your Lost Legacy I have by John Gore. I haven't read that book. It's new. It's about Israel. It's a lot of things about Israel. So I hope enough people come that I don't have to take anything back home. Somebody give me an head count real quick of how many people are in here. But let it be a blessing. I uh, helped a sister. How many do we have? 16. How many? 16. I helped a sister in North Carolina. Listen quickly. God, God nudged me to go help her for a while. And she put a book out every four months because it was costly. It was in color, a little magazine. I kept all the magazines. And she wasn't so sure about me, you know. And my friend says, you know, she keeps all of your literature that comes to her, her house. She does. I said, yes. I said, there's treasures in there. I said, somebody else needs to read it and somebody else and somebody else. You don't want to throw it away. It might be the answer somebody's great problem. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The research and the time and the investment and what somebody has given us. Amen? 
So it took me a little while. And I, I'm just telling you, oh, and there's some candy. The best candy in the world is in this bag. It's, I'm telling you, I invested in four cases of this. It's each bag. Everybody has three and three wonderful flavors. Just to let you know you're sweet. Hallelujah. See this wonderful anointing oil? Adonai. Royal Scepter, it's called. I'm not going to give it to the goodwill. I'm going to give it to somebody who knows how to use it. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm doing? You, you've got to see. You've got to see the revelation in little things. And we won't be wasters. And we won't be wanting. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But everything is put in our hands. It's put there for a purpose. So I thought I can bless somebody. Anoint your doorpost. Anoint your car. Anoint your pantry. Anoint your refrigerator. Hallelujah. God will honor what you do. You've got to know this, that he is God, and nothing slips by his glance. So when you're faithful, and so if somebody called me and wanted to come and help me, I'm, I'm just telling you this because it would probably be easy for you because you're younger. But I ran out and I said, Lord, show me where the bags are that didn't cost so much, and they had seven of them in a package. So I was able to buy the bags, you know, and I already had a few at my house. And why leave anything in your house after a year? You don't leave food in your house or bread. Oh no. Just listen. Let somebody else. You have some of you women have clothes you haven't worn in a year. Bless somebody that needs the clothes. And you watch and see what God will do for you. I'm talking about having a spirit that's not selfish. Having a spirit that the hand is open because the heart is giving. Or the hand is giving and the heart is open. Hallelujah. And nothing is too precious, women or men. Or you love too much that you don't love your brother or your sister more. Amen. He said, no greater love than any man to leave his life down for his friend. Hallelujah. You never outgive God and you never give away the best. You always give away the less. Because you cannot give him, okay? So two several people can come and help me. Um, I hope everybody gets what you wanted. Glory to God. A lot of them have books in them. They're nice books. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Kevin Zeta. I got a lot of Kevin Zeta books and CDs. They have not been read. Oh, Lord, I hope he didn't hear that. But I just, I, I can't get to it. I feel the shortness of time. I'm not talking about I'm going to die. I'm going to go to Israel. But anyway, if I'm not going to read them, bless someone else. Like me. I kept some. He's given me most of his books. I kept some. Hallelujah. Somebody else would like to help her. Thank you, Jesus. Take this red. It's for somebody else. Sing hallelujah. Christ, the Savior, is born. Christ, the Savior. Now, there's something there's got a trick on them, so that means it's for me. Hallelujah.
to reveal, but we don't know how to look through that looking glass, come into that image of what he's doing. And Richard just suddenly started playing. You understand what I'm saying? Suddenly the windows of heaven open. And these are moments of eternity in our lives. Moments. Moments. Do you know what happens on the feast days of the calendar of the Jewish people every year? It has been proven, and scholars think, and especially Jewish Christians think, it's when the Lord opens the heavens. It's when they have the feast days. Come on, here it is. We just, this is Hanukkah. We're coming right out of it, I think. But it says, I was singing that song of a little town of Bethlehem this morning. The hopes and fears of all the years I've met in you tonight. And I found, I wondered, I thought, what day was Jesus born on when I was listening to that? I mean, give me some thoughts so he can tell you something. Just don't wonder too far. You'll wonder right out of the blessing God has for you. But I thought, what a day. They're proving now when the very day that the rains came. I'm talking about the day of the week. They've proven when Noah was born. I got a calendar, a Jewish calendar. Tells you all this. When Ezekiel died, when Esther died. Come on, God's got the information. We just have to get it from him. You have to get into that place where God wants to share his thoughts, his wonders, his greatness with us. And guess what I just found out? I've been sharing with you about my granddaughter. And I wondered if she went home too soon. I would just been weeping all week long. And I miss God. And someone came to see me yesterday to help me in my house. And they decided to visit the church where she had been going. She said, I got a report to give you. She said, I went in there and I heard her mention Christina's name four times. She asked him what it was about. They were talking about. That when she came to their church, she prophesied over people right and left. And never told me. Never told me. Said her word was very accurate. Well, she'd go down and prophesy and come home and give me what for. But never mind. You know, God was working. Let God work. Let him work. You know, the gifts and calling without repentance helps straighten out the lines of the crooked places. Glory to God, he's preparing the way. But they said that every time that she came, they at the end they would prophesy over one another. They, what did they call it? it? Prepare the way? Interaction or something like that. And that she would, her word was accurate. And see, when she was a little girl, seven, she's 43 now. God put the fire on her. But I felt she needed to go back home because she, she wanted to come here and have a new beginning. And I said, honey, you got unfinished business you go back and take care of. Wow. Don't leave it. You know what I'm saying? 
or by the time you do go back, you know, it'll be more difficult and harder. But the point is, God did use her. God did bless her. Yeah. Yes. And he did yes. start the pump again in her life. Amen. Hallelujah while yes. she was here. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All my investments in her. It cost me over $1,000 to get her out here. That was just for the plane fare. Luggage, listen, luggage was 30 40 and the third piece was $150. I said, how much are you bringing? Hallelujah. <laughs> But I'm just telling you, nothing is too great when you're investing in God. I don't care. Amen. He said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Somebody's coming. We got another bag? Or, or are you already here? Who is that? Oh, we got a bag for you too. Hallelujah. <laughs> a little blessing. Let's just take her something. And be blessed. I hope you enjoy whatever is in there. If not, bless somebody else with it. Did you get one? Yeah, you better. I'm going to see we got left. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I could give it to you. I'm so glad. And listen, you want to give people spiritual things. Don't think about another novel. Another novel. Novelty gift. Most people give novelty gifts because they don't know how to reach forth their hand and give somebody a word. Give him something eternal. Reach over. Thus saith the Lord. And what you got to realize is that word keeps unfolding all the time. It just keeps unfolding. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Keeps unfolding. Hallelujah. Let him unfold you. You got a few wrinkles in there, he'll iron them out. Glory to God. Let's sing it again. Silent night. A holy night. And, and listen, all those wonderful songs concerning Christmas that time of the year, most of them was written by European people from Europe. And they're classics. They never go out of style. Thank you. 